Good morning, afternoon, or whatever time you're watching that video. But if you're alive, it's a good morning out of a very um, crispy coldness in Cologne that morning. We had a beautiful temperature these last days, but um, it's getting crispy in the morning. So welcome back. It's another round of Sayspiration and another round of a dirty sales trick. If you've been following that series, either the German or the English speaking one for over the last weeks and month, you would have seen that we're now at a stage where it's not so much about any more kind of very specific selling technique. It's more we're getting into broader aspects and more into um, psychology principles. So what we're going to look to look at today is a guilt tripping sell. The guilt tripping cell is very near and close dear friends with blame communication. And if you ever look up on blame communication, it's in the book of toxic communication rules. So that's what we're going to do today. And we'll look at it, why you shouldn't do it, why you probably sometimes at least partially use it. And that's fine. But when does it flip over and why you for sure um, should not buy anything um, from anyone who's using the hardcore blame and guilt tripping cell. Um, so then we are back at feminist economy. If you watch that on feminist economy, I see your comments. It's cross posted to empathic business and less content media. So we will follow up on that comments later on. Um, and also announcement, the 1st of November is still standing for our English speaking crowd, the academy, and also some of the training stuff is coming to you in English. We follow up on that 1st of November. Keep your eyes out. So what of all, first of all, is a guilt tripping cell? Because if you hear it, it sounds like, why in the freaking world would anyone do a guilt tripping cell? That that should would would never work. Um, yeah, it's one of the most powerful sales and communication techniques to get people to do stuff. Only problem, it's not very um, nice. Um, people are not doing it by free, open. They, of course, they have a free will, but um, it's not like that. They do it openly. They don't do it motivated. And on the long term, it's like always. Every dirty sales trick is in the long term a hell lot of shit mess. So you probably already seen it and used it yourself, a guilt tripping cell or a blame communication. Think about if I start out that video. So it's a Thursday. How was your sales week? Did you start to the 20 minutes a day at least of sales? Did you do your workout? Did you cut back on your carbs? And for some modeling, did you make a thousand bucks in 10 minutes? How does that feel? It probably doesn't feel that awful because I'm using not the voice you would use for a guilt tripping cell. And I didn't use the face for a guilt tripping cell. But it's quite easily. As soon as you start people to remind them of their homework, and we all been there sitting in a class and you're like, oh no, now it's gonna happen. And did you do your homework? And you're like, <laughs> No, of course not. At least me, I'm, I was one of these people who doesn't really enjoy homework, didn't get the meaning of it. Um, but so it's kind of that feeling. You're feeling like back in middle school and feeling like, oh my God, of course didn't do my homework, playing outside, doing sports or whatever. And any kind of book was much more fun and enjoyable than doing any kind of work. So it's kind of that feeling that we know. It's also like um, a blame communication. Most of us know at least partially, and it doesn't have to be a toxic relationship, but um, that, darling, did you do the dishes? Yeah, that's kind of a classic blame communication. And the interesting thing, of course, it works because we're feeling bad, and then because we're feeling bad and we like people, especially our spouses or so, we're going to get moving and do the dishes. Um, and that's all in the room of guilt tripping and blame communication. So it's a powerful communication technique. It's a powerful psychology moment to put a person to feeling guilty to let them do stuff. It's kind of then, why didn't you respond to my email? Why didn't you? All that kind of communication. The truth is, um, why it will work that people get moving, the feeling inside is not good. And especially if you're like, think about your coaching or training business, or you really want to move the needle on a long-term, think about change management or so. 
the starting point of that someone blaming them and guilt tripping them and doing stuff will kill your project. And that's what most people don't really get about the combination of why sales and what sales techniques you use is so important. It's much more important to use good sales techniques to have a successful project, to have a successful client relationship. If you use awful sales techniques, your chance of a successful client relationship, especially long term and especially in the room of coaching, training, change management, real change is going to screw you over. Because the starting point of that relationship was built not on a relationship, not on trust, not on free will, but guilt tripping people. And guilt tripping is one of the baselines of psychology in so many dirty sales tricks. We had that a little bit last week with like the insecurity cell, which is also, if you play with the insecurities of people, it's also a big um, psychology principle. But the guilt tripping power is an even bigger thing and we use it quite easily. And normally, even if I'm using it and I like asking you, and if you're German speaking, are you on our email list for our challenge starting 21st of September? Depending on how I frame, how I use my words, which tone I use, it's going to hit you deep down the core. And that's why it's so necessary to understand that it's not only is about what I'm saying, but how I'm saying it. And yes, we all have that mothers telling us that. In German, that is so saying the tone macht die Musik, the tone makes the music. And for sure, I hear that so many times. Um, but um, considering that blame communication and is a form of toxic communications, um, many, pe many people or most of us are not really aware of how hurtful blame communication can be. Blame communication put up with pressure or a certain degree of hierarchy breaks people. So if you have blame communication and a hierarchy or a power, um, shift so that the person who used the blame communication is in a more powerful um, position, it can break people. If you look at all the awful things that happen in corporates when like a boss is just like verbally going get abusive, a big part of it is blame communication. Um, most people are not aware they use blame communication. If you call out on them, sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't help. But we're not in an inside communications class here. We're in a sales class, so we're using external communications. It's not how I to speak to my employees. It's not about speaking to my speak to my, um, partners and colleagues. It's about how I speak to my future clients. And why would I open up, even if it's useful, use a communication technique, which is if I know it, breaking people. Why should I use that? And that's why I'm not a big fan of sales psychology. And I was trying to reframe that and go into the room with you of client psychology. Because if you look at it, the sales psychology, all the questions I just asked are relevant. Make a sales, go out of it. Doesn't matter, make the money, leave it. Doesn't matter how you make the money, just the client should buy it. If you are, and especially if you're a solopreneur, a small company, where you're more in a personal connection, so you're the sales team and the hat and the service provider, so you do everything from sales to value delivery to everything. If you go into these communication techniques where it breaks your potential client, that doesn't make any kind of sense. But you can, of course, always decide that it's a good idea and use that free will, free ethical will, totally up to you. But for long-term success and a long-term positioning, it's not a good idea. And if you look at the smaller companies who are in that world around here, like we like you know, doing our job for 20 years, it's more in small sense to not use it because then you have a good baseline with your client. You can even, if a client relationship ends, you will every, we, we meet up two, three, 20 times, sometimes a year. So it has to be a good baseline of it. And the blame and the guilt communication is something we use quite fast and very easily without recognizing it. 
That's why the process of a good sales copy, or it doesn't matter if you're writing a social media post or making a video or having a first conversation, um, introductory or first free strategy session with your client is that you script it, that you look at the process, that you look at the words you use. Um, and especially if you probably use some new stuff and first of all it works, but then you realize you have the wrong clients, there is no long-term success anymore in it, then you should really, really look at it. On the other side, also look at it if your conversions and your new client, your new business isn't that high, then you probably on an inner feeling have that point that you don't want to use all these dirty sales tricks. And so you go into avoidance of dirty sales tricks. And me, that means, of course, you don't do a proper sales shop. So guilt tripping sell is even sometimes a business model. And that's where it's kind of like especially hard. Think about personal trainers. If you change people's life, especially like the weight or on a health you sometimes have to like kick them in their ass to get them moving. But kicking in the ass and guilt tripping cell, cell is something different. There's a selling, selling technique I always also learn people, it's called the gap technique. It's that you tell people about their problem they're having because they're not very aware of that problem, but also offering immediately the solution. That's why it's called a gap, so you open up problem and solution and offer a fix for it. That's not a guilt tripping cell. Compare these two is that in the guilt tripping cell, you just pinpoint out the problem and then even dig deeper and deeper and deeper so that they feel guilty and feel guilty of their failures. So the carbs, the nut sales, the not enough money and probably even till the point, and if you remember one of our former episode, not feeling enough as a person, as a self-worth anymore. Um, also, I would be very aware of how you use blame communication. And blame communication, especially if you, it is a default mechanism um, for stressful situations for many of us. So if we're under stress and feel attacked um, and cannot attack back in a physical way, because that's illegal and of course doesn't make any kind of sense, a blame communication is a fighting back mechanism. Why is that now important in an external communication? Quite easily. If your business feels threatened and we're middle still in a global pandemic, an economic crisis, and shit goes down the drain in the whole over the world, of course your business model can be under pressure. Your business model can be, um, you can be frightened about where do I get my food? How do I pay my bills? How do I pay my, pay my rent? All that stuff is an attack. Yes, it is an attack, and that's why we all feeling also stressed. Um, it doesn't matter if your business is rotten running, you will be feel stressed because other people feel stressed. So at the moment, especially, we're kind of a feeling of attack mode. And of course, we're in flight or fight. Flight is that moment where you kind of feel like, I think that is a good idea. Um, you can freeze up, you all know your flight mechanisms. But the fight mechanism is all there. The interesting part about fighting is that we always have that idea that's a very physical thing. But fighting starts with verbal communication. We're all proper trained human beings. We normally don't punch people, but we punch people with our words. And one of the default mechanisms of feeling attacked and feeling frightened, and now think about how do you feel with your business, then using guilt tripping and blame communication is a fighting back moment which is, of course, not the best idea because you don't do your sales out of a fight moment for punching other people into boring stuff. And that's where all the, the guilt and blame tripping is probably something you also see at the moment. It's these sentences and the hard thing is it's true. It's kind of like, why didn't you take care of your business before? But let's be honest, is that a good sales technique to tell and ask people why did you don't do taking care of your stuff for the last five years? That's just not nice. And especially, where was the helpful point in that? We're now in 2020, so it doesn't matter what I did for five years ago. I have to get up and look now and in the future and rework my history. But it's not helping anyone, blaming someone that he or she or whatever you want to call them didn't do stuff for the last days, weeks, it does not help. It's about how you move forward. But because we all know how 
successful guilt tripping and blaming people is in a fight modus, we use that and we fight back to people verbally using a blame and guilt tripping communication. So if your business or you feeling kind of under attack, depending on what a niche or branch you're in, depending on what country you are, it's a normal feeling and I'm very, I feel you, it's, it's awful. But that means even doing a more distant sales job. Distant sales job is get yourself on check. Understand that your future client was not the one who was attacking you. And don't go into that room of weird communication out of that necessary to fight back. It will always hurt the wrong people. Because if you guilt trip your future clients, not another good idea. You should blame the old persons, but they're probably not there anymore. And you know, things. so guilt and blame never helped anyone. And in, in the legal field, that's your job. But in our world, it doesn't help anyone. Except it's even worse. It's one of these, like the insecurity cell, who has long-term effects. Because in long-term effect, you realize what you have done. You realize why your clients are not that happy with you, why your client doesn't feel that well. And that's kind of like, you don't want to do that, especially back to you working closely with your clients. So your sales and value delivery is one person. You don't have the distance. So realize when you use the guilt tripping or when you have to pimp out the needs of your clients, of course you have to do that. And it's like, we also have to do it. I'm always telling people, you're lacking structure, you're lacking processes. That's the proper reason why you don't have enough money on your bank account but there is a solution to it. So it's working on your sales process. It's you, not using that stuff, but using a proper communication. Um, doing more sales and marketing, because that's one of the biggest problems that most companies are not aware that they're doing way too less. My clients always ask me, am I too salesy? I'm like, I watched your videos, all of them, and there was not one even proper pitch that I know that I can book you or hire you. So no, you didn't be too salesy. You just do more, but you don't use sales communication. So that's another point. If you can argue, like say, okay, that's the problem you have, but that's where you can step up your game easily, even without hiring you, which is called a consultation sale. That always works. So you give in your sales communication the first step that people have themselves. They realize a first step, not the whole shebang. Don't write 20 post or blog articles um, about helping people, and then you put all your knowledge in there. That's not what I meant one step so they understand they get a solution there it's not just like a marketing blah blah you get a solution in there and then you can step up your game but also always have a look back and understand that the psychology and your emotional status and all that when you are in always reflects back on your sales that's why you found your middle ground that's why you take a deep breath before making that kind of video that's why i'm yeah, people always like, yes, and if you follow me on Instagram, Feminist Economy and Empathic Business, and sometimes even Regina, because I'm tagging her as so you're posting it, you see I'm doing an eyeshadow of the day. Starting out with that, I started on Monday and um, was a little bit, you all were very keen on my funky eyeshadow and um, makeup looks. So I did, okay, I'm going to do that. Um, the thing is, and I got that question, like, but why do you put so much makeup? First of all, it's not that much makeup. It's a hell of eyeshadow. Um, because for me, before I'm prepping into, like, my work day, for me, it's very relaxing. Like, scramble the ideas around in my head before I kind of say inspiration or the good morning show. Um, figuring out what I wanted to say, the points I'm making, doing a German one, doing the English one, and, like, it's for me, it's kind of that grounding exercise, that calmness, that getting out of the box of like the thousand of emails I have to answer, the appointments I have to run to, the rest of the hectic normal CEO life I'm living. But that moment where like looking at my hell of makeup, you don't have an idea how much makeup I own. And looking at like what color mood I am, what, what would be something different, not really honestly, yeah, probably some, some look better on video, some look worse on video. You're here for the talking. Um, so, but it's grounding me. And that's one of these little exercises, these rituals where you can do then because you're not in the hustle or you're not in the fight or flight motors of your grounding exercise to do a proper sales job. Because sales is always that one point, a potential client only sees your sales side. Just a real client sees how well you do your job. 
So if you slack and lack and bash your sales, that says much more about yourself and how serious you take your business and your sales relationships and your client relationship than anything else. I know talking to big companies, I'm like, that's the representation in sales you have and you, uh, you figuring that out why you don't have the right clients because your sales team, your marketing is representing everything. So always be aware of that. That's why if it's a one person job, do a grinding exercise. If it's eyeshadow, do eyeshadow. If it's a cup of coffee, if it's a little bit of a meditation, there are thousands and one tip out there to get you grounding. But then do a proper sales job. And afterwards, probably the world is crumbling back to you. The hustle and bustle or the I have to step up my game. But you will make it there. So wrapping it up, guilt tripping and blame communication is not a good idea. Especially be aware that it can be your flight or fight mode, which will kill your business even worse um, if you are in that awful position that you're under a crisis stress at the moment. So please don't use it. And also be aware that if you, of course, part uses a little bit of guilt to open up the problem room for your client and then offering a solution, that's always fine. That's called a gap technique. We're teaching that the whole, I don't know, for I don't know, <laughs> too many years. But it's a very powerful because people, potential clients don't get what their problem is. So that's one of the big uh, psychology principles and one of the dirty sales tricks. I hope as always you enjoyed it. And if you have further questions, just comment. And um, asking about the eyeshadow, do that too, doesn't matter. And I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.